Josh here, and welcome to the second part of my Rocky Thon, wherein I'll go through the entire Rocky series chronologically. This video focuses on Rocky II, the direct sequel to the original Rocky in 1976, made three years after that one. Gotta love the numerical stare scheme for this uh, series of titles, you know? Rocky I, Rocky II, three, four, five. Uh, well, they almost got there. At any rate, this is a really enjoyable movie. I really don't have so many complaints, but the ones I do have, I do definitely need to point out. Uh, this is the first of the series that is being written and directed by Sylvester Stallone, and I think it's very obviously directed by Stallone, if only because it shares his kind of problems with, stru er, with structure in films. It really doesn't follow a, a, you know, a three-act structure, and I know that not every film needs to do that, and he's proven that he can do this, at least at a later point in time, effectively, as in the last fourth Rambo film, which is really just kind of one big build-up until the explosive climax, but uh, I think it does affect the film in somewhat negative fashion right here. To start, though, let's go through the story. This film takes place right after the original Rocky. It actually starts with a highlight reel of the original fight with Apollo Creed and uh, really gets you pumped up. And you're definitely coming off the high from that. It's a great beginning to this movie. Really realistic take. I actually really enjoy the direction it goes here. It kind of involves the aftermath of Rocky's fight and what happens. And I actually, I, like I said, I really like that. A lot of movies just kind of go you know, continue on with the absurd storyline, keep getting bigger and bigger, but this movie does try and keep things down to earth, and I like that. I'm sure that some of the sequels are just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. We'll, we'll see how those go. At any rate, I think it really worked here. I really appreciate Stallone's attempt to continually ground the series in reality. So uh, even though there's, like I said, the big highlight reel, you're coming off the high of that, what's he do? what does he do right after that? He goes to the hospital, because he got the shit beat out of him in the original movie. And I really enjoyed that. There's a tender moment there, uh, with Adrian, and he gets to talk to Carl Weathers, a.k.a. Paulo Creed, in the hospital. And uh, it's just a really great start to the film, I think. As well, it kind of goes on some interesting character paths where Rocky has now has a lot of money, so he's just buying everything he can, regardless of its use or importance to him, such as uh, custom clothes for his dog Butt Kiss, I found particularly humorous. And uh, well, obviously the film deals with, you know, Apollo Creed wanting a rematch. And the film kind of goes a little more, oh, I'm going to say epic, but a little more wider, a little more wide in its scope here. The original movie focused very much on Rocky. We were right in Rocky space the entire time, but in this one, we get to see perspectives of other characters. We see more of Polly coming along here, but moreover, we get to see a lot more of Apollo Creed. Uh, Carl Weathers does a fantastic job in that role. Uh, they really make him a lot nastier in this one, whereas in the first one, he was kind of just prideful and neglectful. Uh, this one, he really is the villain of the film, so it sets the final fight up quite nicely, which actually is quite a good thing, because uh, the majority of the movie, I think, actually, and this is relating back to the structural problems I just mentioned a, few, a minute ago, that uh, the majority of the movie doesn't really have that kind of same build-up that the original film did. It does have a great opening, it kind of sets itself off for the first 20 minutes to a half an hour, and then it slows down again to this uh, very realistic family drama where Rocky you know, has trouble getting a job, He's, uh, you know, semi-illiterate here. He's got this kind of accent, so he can't really do the commercials that the sponsors want him to do. And he's forced back into manual labor. So despite all his money, which he's now spent quite a large portion of on frivolities, he, uh, he really is much the same person. And the story is very interesting. It goes from there. Uh, he's really starting a family life with Adrian. And uh, there's one late-game twist, I think happens about uh, a three-quarter point, that really changes, actually, the dynamics of the story, and uh, was not expecting it. Real gut-wrencher, so to speak. And uh, definitely, I think, is kind of the emotional heart of this movie, rather than the underdog story. Although that's still certainly there, because uh, after that kind of uh, twist that I said, there is a fan. Fantastic training and fight sequence, particularly. The fight in this movie really does blow away the original. I mean, we understand that in the original, that really wasn't the point of the movie. It was kind of his overcoming life rather than the fight. But in this one, they really do make a spectacle of it. There's some beautiful slow motion shots to it, and I'm skipping ahead here. But Bill Conti has this fantastic track there that uh, blends the, you know, generally rocky fight theme. Gonna fly now with kind of a, a marching band. Uh, drumming sound in the background. One of the characters mentions that this is going to be World War III in the ring, and it really gets this more military approach to it. 
and uh, I'll skip back to I'll talk that I'll talk about that more in a minute. But yeah, I really enjoyed the story here. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be negative, but I think there are some pacing problems where the middle of the film can feel a little unnecessarily slow because the film doesn't have as clear of a direction of the original. But having said that, there are some immensely enjoyable moments within the film itself. You definitely need to check it out. Adrian really does a great job of uh, opening up her character. All my complaints about the original one, their relationship seeming kind of creepy, are definitely fixed here. She really does become more emotive, which of course makes sense of the story. And Polly as well is uh, less repulsive, has a uh, little more to do here actually. And uh, particularly, like I said before, Carl Weathers, gotta love him. Really great actor, makes a great addition to the series. And uh, Rocky himself, Sylvester Stallone, you know, really gotta give the guy credit. He gives a fantastic performance in this movie that is, for my money at least, sporadically better than the original movie. Because he has this one scene uh, involved after the late scene twist happens, right after it, where it's so emotional that I almost got teary-eyed myself. It really felt like these are real characters. And I think the, real, the movie really uh, continues to thrive off of the fact of how well-drawn that Rocky is and uh, how well likable, frankly, a lot of the characters are. And uh, I did want to mention as well that um, I think Mickey is a little silly. Like his character, he repeats a lot of catchphrases from the original, you know, crap lightning and whatnot. But uh, he is still a great character in the series. There's some good evolution of him here, and particularly the Rocky character, like I said, has a really great character arc here that I think really works. There's some really interesting aftermath issues that this movie deals with. If anyone has seen um, the Infernal Affairs trilogy, a Chinese series of movies, it in kind of reminds me of Infernal Affairs 3, the third one, which is much the same thing where it kind of takes place after the events of the first film and kind of deals with the consequences of what happened there. I really enjoy that kind of sequel rather than just kind of one-off James Bond-esque story. Not dissing Bond there, gotta love it. And uh, skipping on here, we're going to the effects. Again, it's a boxing movie, not really too many effects, but I gotta say, the cinematography... Um, does change quite a bit in this movie. It's not as a focused on rocky space, and it doesn't have as many of those long, far-off, uh, lonely shots that it had in the original. This is much more a wider movie, like I said, in scope, and the cinematography adjusts to that. There's definitely a lot more uh, conventional framing, but the one main exception, I have to say, is the final fight, where there's these beautiful slow-motion shots, really frantic editing, and it uh, really keeps you on edge. It's amazingly tense. I cannot say enough about it. What a fight it is, really. Uh, gets your blood pumping. Even if that twist takes a little of the wind out of the direction of the movie, that fight more than makes up for it if you're looking for the action because it really is just that good. I hope, if nothing else, even if the series story degenerates into silliness, that the fights continue to be as well choreographed as this one is. It's really great to see Carl Weathers again. I can't mention that enough. Lastly, I did, was I was talking about the score before by Bill Conti, and I you know I really appreciate what Bill Conti did here. A lot of a lot of composers really uh, you know they rest on their laurels. They keep pumping out the exact same sounds over and over again. And don't get me wrong, this is a series, so there is repeated uh, you know oral motifs from the original movie, particularly the main themes. But a lot of them are remixed and kind of rejiggered a little to fit in different situations, and a lot of them are added onto, such as the aforementioned military like. Fight th or a fight theme that takes place at the climax of this movie. And, you know, what, what more can I say? Bill Conti does a fantastic job. The music is still dated, but that really just comes with the territory. You can't knock it for something like that. It's well composed for what it is. I appreciate that. Overall, Rocky II is a very good film. I really enjoyed it. All the performances are spot on. The story takes an interesting direction. And while it doesn't have the same kind of drive that the original movie did and can feel slow in some places, it is still a really great addition to the Rocky mythos. And uh, particularly, I actually like how the character of Gazzo is continuing to be in this series. It's really interesting because I kind of thought that this kind of slimy character, at least morally, would disappear because it wasn't as acceptable to audiences. But you know what? Kudos to the 70s for being a, cha er, cha er, a decade of challenging cinema because uh, I imagine that's mainly the reason why he's here. Now let's see if he appears in the third one or not because that's starting in the 80s. Anyway, go check out Rocky 2. Still a great movie. Not as good as the first one, perhaps, but definitely worth checking out.